There are many wildlife spectacles in the world, but not all creatures are this abundant. Spot a rare animal and you see something really special. But how do you track down the world's most charismatic and endangered beasts? We'll show you where to go, what to look for, and what else you'll meet on the way. There are many endangered species in the world, but it's the rare, iconic species that capture the imagination. Animals that live in some of the most beautiful wilderness on Earth. We've chosen 10 of these animals based on exclusivity and sheer wildlife spectacle. Be prepared for the jaw-dropping, the breathtaking, and the awesome, as we show you where to find the rarest of the wildlife greats. First stop, Monterey, California. Monterey is situated on the coast of Northern California. Its rich temperate waters support a fascinating array of marine life that's easily accessible to the wildlife tourist. You're guaranteed to see seals and sea lions who may be as curious about you as you are about them. Gray whales are also occasional visitors. But when it comes to rare animals, it's an otter that steals the show. And they don't come much cuter than this. This is the sea otter. By the early 1900s, they had nearly been hunted to extinction. But fortunately, a small colony in Alaska survived and slowly spread down the coast. These otters in Monterey are their descendants. Their incredibly dense fur keeps them warm. There are up to a million hairs per square inch. That's four times as many as on a whole human head. The otter fluffs up its fur to trap air next to its skin for insulation. They can dive to over 300 feet, nearly 100 meters, and stay under for five minutes, giving them plenty of time to forage. Sea otters like to eat sea urchins, crabs, and abalone shellfish. This diet comes with tough packaging, but it's no problem for these otters. They use rocks to smash food out of hiding places. The rocks are often carried to the surface to use as a hammer or an anvil. This is one of the very few animals, apart from humans, that uses tools. Sea otters are devoted mothers. They groom and suckle their pups while afloat. When the female dives, the pup gets left on the surface, held up by the air trapped in its fluffy coat. Baby otters must learn how to find and tackle their prey, but accidents with gill nets and oil spills have left many pups orphaned. Pups don't survive long without their mother, but fortunately, help is at hand. Monterey Bay Aquarium has rescued many sea otters. 
the divers become foster mothers and take the pups on foraging trips to show them the many ways to find food. If the pups are good learners, there's a strong chance they can be successfully released into the wild. If you visit Monterey, you might spot one of these grown-up orphans, perhaps teaching its own youngster how to find a meal. It's thought that there are now more than 2,000 sea otters off the Californian shore, but there's no room for complacency. A population this small is still in danger. Spot one now, and you have a rare privilege indeed. From California, we head west and down under. Could the rare creatures here be bouncing into obscurity? The kangaroo is a symbol of Australia. They're doing well, but many of Australia's marsupials are in trouble. These pouched mammals evolved separately from the rest of the world, making them vulnerable to invaders. Cats, dogs, rats, and farming have taken their toll. Some of these endangered creatures now only survive on islands off the mainland or in remote areas hardly touched by humans. Here's our guide to some of Australia's endangered oddities. The first sailors thought these animals were overgrown rats. But this isn't a rodent's walk. It's the unmistakable hop of a kangaroo. And this is the quokka. On the mainland, they're extinct, but they still breed freely on Rottenest Island. The endearing-looking numbat has hung on to its mainland habitat, but barely. It clings to a small patch of eucalypt forest in the southwest. Unusually for a marsupial, these creatures don't have pouches, which is why they carry their babies around on their backs. On Bernier Island, you'll find the only member of the kangaroo family that burrows. The burrowing betong, also known as the rat kangaroo. They became extinct on the mainland in the 1960s. The culprits probably introduced foxes and cats. Bilbies were once widespread across Australia, but now they are restricted to the dry, infertile scrubland in the northwest, where there are few foxes. See it from a distance and it looks like a rabbit. But get closer and the nose shows this is a very different animal. You wouldn't expect to find a kangaroo in a tree, but in Northwest Australia, you're in for a surprise. Tree kangaroos have longer forelimbs than their terrestrial cousins. They're designed for grabbing branches. Its hind legs are built for walking, not hopping, and its feet have special non-slip soles. It's not just gentle leaf-eating marsupials that have become rare in Australia. The voracious Tasmanian devil was wiped out on the mainland and now is only found on the island it gets its name from. It's thought the devils were driven out by dingoes, brought from Asia by immigrating Aboriginal people more than 5,000 years ago. In a twist of fate, the dingoes themselves are now in danger. Interbreeding with domestic dogs means there are very few purebreds left. The best place to see them is on Fraser Island, off the East Coast. But if you don't have time for a round Australia tour, why not visit one of the many conservation centers whose breeding projects have helped save Australia's unusual mammals from the jaws of extinction? Up next, step onto the island of Komodo and tell your friends you've seen a real life dragon.
the Komodo Dragon. It's a giant with an exclusive address. This dinosaur lookalike is only found in Indonesia on a narrow band of islands east of Bali. And it's on Komodo Island itself that they're easiest to spot. Getting to Komodo isn't easy. You have to island hop and then take a six hour boat ride. But it's worth it as soon as you see the imposing volcanic mass rising from the sea. In geological time, Komodo Island is not that old, only 50 million years. But its prehistoric looking lizards make you think you're in the age of the dinosaurs. As soon as you set foot on shore, keep your wits about you. These lizards can be twice as big as a man and have a horrific bite. The locals have become used to their presence, but they never lose their respect for them. That saliva contains a cocktail of deadly bacteria that can make you so ill you may never recover. That's why the deer and pigs that come to drink at Komodo's watering holes have to be so careful. Don't trust a dragon even when it looks relaxed. If it's warm from the heat of the day, it can quickly launch an attack. The slightest nip from these terrible jaws could cause death from infection in two days. The dragons can also kill outright. A 220 pound or 100 kilo male can run as fast as a human sprinter. Komodos don't distinguish between humans and other prey. Anything they encounter on the island is fair game, even their own young. They spend the first two years of their life hiding in trees where it's safe from the cannibals below. Adult dragons are too big to climb. Komodo's coast is rich in vegetation, so it's a popular place for wildlife. The dragons are regular visitors here, terrorizing the colorful crabs and aptly named mudskippers. As well as eating live prey, the lizards are happy to scavenge. Local fishermen oblige by providing scraps from the daily catch. Most visitors to Komodo come just to see the giant lizard, but don't forget there's wildlife offshore too. These protected waters have great potential for diving and snorkeling. But make sure you don't bump into a dragon, unless you want to become endangered too. The Komodo dragon has deadly jaws. Here are five other unusual creatures with a nasty bite. The octopus uses a tough beak to tear into prey. Some species also deliver a lethal dose of poison. The slow loris harvests poison from a gland in its arm. Mixed with saliva, it makes for a toxic bite. A giant centipede. This one's from Arizona. A bite from its jaw will make you extremely sick. The Gila monster is one of only two venomous lizards in the world. It clamps onto flesh and uses its hollow teeth to chew in nerve toxin. 
The venom of the daddy long legs is rumored to be more toxic than any other spider. Fortunately, its jaws are too weak to penetrate human skin. The theory remains untested. Next, we head to a true African oasis. But is it sanctuary enough for Africa's rarest dog? The Akavango, the jewel of the Kalahari. It's a river that never makes it to the sea, but instead creates a vast wildlife oasis in the north of Botswana. It's home to Africa's most endangered predator, the wild dog. This pack hunter used to roam much of Africa, but now there are fewer than 5,000 left. The Akavango is one of its last remaining strongholds. They share this watery world with all the African favorites. Much of the land here is swamp, so it's unsuitable for farming. The animals here live in relative peace. This reserve is also a birder's paradise. A wild dog pack size can be more than 25 animals. They're incredibly social and love to paw and lick each other to maintain contact. Get close to a wild dog and there's a strong musky odor. This smell may be another way in which the group keep track of each other. Wild dogs have had it hard. Each pack needs up to 1,200 square miles or 3,000 square kilometers of territory to hunt. Many territories have been carved up by roads and farms, and the dogs have been infected with rabies and canine distemper. A pack of wild dogs hunting is an awesome sight. They'll chase their prey for over a mile until they wear it down. Pack members take turns to head the assault. Wild dogs have a reputation as vicious killers, which is why they were shot indiscriminately. See a pack socialize, and it's a different story. The family is headed by a dominant pair, and everyone helps to raise the pups. That's perhaps why there can be up to 21 in a single litter. This gives hope for the wild dog's recovery. If they can be given enough land and be kept free from disease, they may just bounce back. If you visit the Akavango, you'll help keep this luscious landscape reserved for the animals, including this rarest of all the hunters. Next, we visit Darwin's Living Laboratory, some of the most famous islands on Earth. The Galapagos Islands are a dream destination for the discerning wildlife tourist, and a must when it comes to endangered wildlife greats. This is Charles Darwin's most famous study site, the place where his theory of evolution got its wings. It's home to some incredibly rare species, such as giant tortoises, marine iguanas, the Galapagos sea lion, and the only penguin to live on the equator. The Galapagos Islands belong to Ecuador. They're an hour and a half flight out into the Pacific from the capital, Quito. If you land on the island of Santa Cruz, you're just a short step from the Charles Darwin Research Station, where they breed the rare giant tortoises. 
The reason these little giants are kept in pens is because it's a tough world out there. For centuries, sailors collected the tortoises for food and left behind rats, cats, and dogs that eat both babies and eggs. When Darwin arrived here, there were 15 different kinds of tortoise, each on their own island. But now, there are only 11. Soon, there may be only 10. Lonesome George from the island of Pinta is the last of his kind. It's ironic that the creature that gave Galapagos its name is under such threat. Galapago is a Spanish word for saddle, the distinctive shape of this tortoise's shell. Venture to other islands and you'll find such delights as blue-footed boobies, lava lizards, land iguanas, waved albatross, and cormorants that have lost the power of flight. The marine wildlife here is equally fascinating. The Galapagos penguin is an oddity. No other penguin is found at the equator. It survives here because although the land is hot, the sea is chilled by currents from the south. They share the water with playful sea lions that delight the snorkeler with their antics and even surf the waves. The Galapagos is home to the world's only marine iguana. This unique lizard uses its horny mouth to graze on algae below the waterline. It gets rid of salt by blowing it out of its nose. At breeding time, male iguanas must secure a patch of dry land near a nesting site. Head bobbing is used to warn off competitors. If the warning doesn't work, a tussle breaks out. One of the most striking things about the Galapagos animals is that they're incredibly tame. You may find yourself face to face with some of the rarest creatures on Earth, but don't stray off path. Visits to the island are strictly regulated. If you stick to the rules, you will help keep these fabulous islands one of the top places to see rare animals for years to come. So far in Wildlife Greats, we featured five places to see rare animals. Our choices are based on a combined wow factor for both destination and wildlife. Let's recap what we've seen so far. First up was Monterey, California, where two and a half thousand sea otters rule the waves. Australia, with its classic landscapes, featured second. Look beyond the familiar and the rare marsupials are bound to intrigue. Then we met dragons, 3,000 of them on the remote island of Komodo. Next, we took a trip to the Akavango, where African hunting dogs run wild. And we've just seen Darwin's Galapagos Islands. They're packed with rare animals, but none so lonesome as George. Next, we head to the world's fourth largest island, where rare ghosts dance in the forest. As the mist rises over Madagascar, haunting calls resonate across the valleys. The calls belong to an ancient group of primates, the lemurs. 
The name lemur comes from a Latin word meaning ghost. There are more than 20 different species, and they range from the tiny mouse lemurs and dwarf lemurs to the larger indri. Perhaps the strangest of all the lemurs is the nocturnal eye eye. It uses its spindly middle finger to probe for grubs. The best known of the lemurs is the ringtail. Once they've warmed up in the morning sun, they really come to life. Scent is a big deal if you're a ringtail. They rub odor onto their tails and waft them in the air to communicate their status. Lemurs were once found all over Africa, but today they only live on Madagascar. On mainland Africa, they were outcompeted by the monkeys, but here it's a different primate that's pushing them out. Madagascar used to be covered in trees. Now only 10% of the forest remains. Ringtails are social animals and head out to forage in groups. Sometimes a less familiar lemur crosses their path. This is Varro Shifaka. Sideways leaping is its trademark. Perhaps the reason for this distinctive mode of travel is Madagascar's top predator. There are no big cats here, so this oddity takes their place. It's a fossa. It has the nose of a dog, the teeth of a leopard, and the whiskers of a mongoose. And a giant mongoose is just what it is. Leaping may be the best way to escape it. Trees may guarantee safety from some predators, but not this one. The shifaka must leap to somewhere the fossa can't follow. The trees of the spiny forest have formidable thorns. The shifaka navigates them with pinpoint accuracy. The fossa is some acrobat, but its paws just aren't nimble enough for the thorns. Beyond the spiny forest, there's an even more alien landscape. These razor-sharp limestone cliffs are found in Ankarana, in the north of the island. It's clearly a hostile environment, but the versatile lemurs manage to live here. This is the crowned lemur, one of the rarest lemurs of all. Somehow, it manages to leap about on the knife-edge rock. It's safe here because this is one place humans can't farm. As the world of these ancient primates collides with the demands of the new, the pressure's on to find a compromise between farming and conservation. So catch these ghosts while you can by visiting Madagascar's national parks. Your custom will help save these forest haunts just for lemurs. Next, find out the best place to get up close to this rare cousin of ours and see how he's doing in the wild. Borneo is home to that most charismatic of great apes, the orangutan.
Study orangs for any length of time and you're no doubt this is a highly intelligent animal. Look at an orangutan and you could be looking at yourself. They have a whole range of behaviors that are incredibly human. They're good problem solvers. This one is making a hat. It seems they hate the rain just as much as we do. When they can't reach the tree they want, they get inventive, using branches as pendulums or springboards. Sadly, this cousin of ours is highly endangered. Poaching, forest fires and logging have destroyed much of its range. The good news is, these orangutans have been given a home. They're orphans at the Sepilok Forest Rehabilitation Center. Sepilok is in Sabah, the Malaysian part of Borneo. And the rehab center welcomes visitors. The aim of the center is eventually to get the orphans back into the wild. Every day they're taken into the forest to get accustomed to the ways of the jungle. These are good opportunities to practice techniques and strengthen muscles. Orangs are well equipped climbers. Their toes are opposable like our thumbs so dangling upside down is no problem. Even a tiny baby can put our acrobatic skills to shame. Sometimes it takes a while to build up confidence. But every ape is treated as an individual and given the best possible chance. As they grow older, the juveniles get bolder and forest outings are treated like a walk in the park. Out in the forest, you can hear the calls of wild adult males. They're solitary and have large cheek pads on their faces. This male was once an orphan and occasionally returns from the wild for a free lunch. Apes are difficult animals to rehabilitate, but it seems to work for orangutans. If Sepilak continues its good work and there's enough forest left in Borneo to rehome these orphans, perhaps one day their numbers will start to grow in the wild. When it comes to rare animals, the big iconic guys attract all the attention. But a lot of little guys are in trouble too. Here are five of those unsung creatures. The spotted owl lives in old growth forest. Unfortunately, its trees are fast disappearing. The desert pupfish survives in tiny brackish puddles in the summer, but now it's under threat from introduced fish. The salt marsh harvest mouse can drink salt water, but its marshes are being drained to build human homes. The sea cucumber is an animal, not a plant. In Galapagos, it's being harvested in vast numbers, destroying life on the seabed. Spix's macaw is so rare, it's extinct in the wild. The remaining birds are kept under tight security. Whale spotting is always a dream, but catching a glimpse of this pure white whale is something really special. These are belugas, and they live in the Canadian Arctic. They're 15 feet or four and a half meters long, and have a mouth that gives them a comical smile. 
Sailors used to call them sea canaries because of their chirping song. They use these sounds to keep in touch with their group and for navigation. These are treacherous waters. The beluga can dive for 20 minutes, but there's still a risk of getting trapped in the frozen sea. Bouncing clicks off the ice helps them find their way. Sometimes, with miles and miles of frozen sea, the only chance of air is a tiny hole. Get stuck in the ice here, and you'll attract attention. A polar bear can smell a trapped whale at a great distance and is big enough to attack it. But ice and polar bears are hardly a threat to the whole species, so how come there are only a few hundred left? Belugas were almost hunted to extinction by whalers, but now they are celebrated. The best place to see them is in Churchill, Canada. Belugas are also found further to the east and occasionally get very tame, like this calf called Wilma. The chance to dive with a beluga is exhilarating. Wilma came from the St. Lawrence Seaway, and here you'll spot some of the other Arctic whales. Bowheads can be 60 feet or 18 meters long. A single male can weigh more than 10 Indian elephants. The huge baleen plates in their mouths filter plankton full of tiny crustaceans called copepods. The most fantastical creature here is the narwhal. This is the whale that may have given rise to the unicorn myth. The spiral horn can be 10 feet or 3 meters long and is in fact a single large tooth. Narwhals feed on squid and arctic cod. Nobody has ever seen them catch one, so we can only wonder how they manage this with such a long spike in the way. In the Arctic summer, inlets open up in the ice and the whales migrate further inland where there are rich feeding grounds. At this time of year, the beluga's skin has become shabby and the warmer seas help it molt. They congregate in gravel bottom bays and use the stones to help rub off last year's skin. When they emerge from last season's coat, the classic white beluga skin shines through once more. As many as several thousand belugas gather in the Churchill River in July. So although they are extremely rare, visit in the summer and you have a great chance to see this enchanting white whale. Next, let's beat a path to the mountains of Africa and meet the biggest ape of all. In the heart of Africa, the mountains rise into spectacular peaks and vast craters. There are active volcanoes here. Their legacy is rich soil and flourishing plant life. The dense undergrowth is home to a gentle giant. 
the largest of the great apes. This is the mountain gorilla. There are only 650 of them left in the wild. Gorillas live in close family groups, led by a dominant male. The silverback makes decisions about where the family forages and keeps a close eye on all his charges. Since their discovery by Westerners in 1902, mountain gorillas have had a troubled history. Forest guards have struggled to protect them. In 1994, a million Rwandan refugees set up camp in the lava fields below the Gorillas Mountains. They needed firewood to cook and to keep them warm at night, taking them straight into the heart of the apes' territory. The Gorillas' territory is taking a further knock from agriculture. This young adult male can't resist the banana crop illegally planted in the buffer zone around the Virunga National Park. As ape and human worlds collide, gorillas become victims of violence. Females have been shot trying to protect infants being stolen for the pet trade. And poachers' snares cause terrible injuries. Get to know the gorillas, and you'll discover that violence is rare in their society. The frightening displays of male silverbacks seldom lead to an attack. Juveniles like to practice acting tough, but the adults intervene if play gets too rough. They're peaceful vegetarians and spend much of their time eating and digesting their food. Their bellies are swollen with huge amounts of roughage and their plant diet means they regularly let off gas. If you want to go and watch the mountain gorilla in its element, you can arrange trips to Bwindi National Park in Uganda or to Rwanda where new lodges have been opened to restart the tourist trade. Something that will strike you most about these apes is their sense of wonder. They are transfixed by their own reflection in a camera lens. Creatures like this chameleon become family viewing. They seem just as fascinated by wildlife as we are. Get a permit to come and meet them. It's your interest and your custom as a wildlife tourist that will help save the gorillas. So far, we've seen nine of our 10 wildlife greats, each one more impressive than the last. But what animal could possibly beat the gorilla? Find out our top choice after this recap. Heading the show was Monterey, California for its endearing sea otters. Come here and you could have a whale of a time. Next, we were Australia bound to meet the kangaroo's rare cousins. On Komodo, we entered the land that time forgot. Beware those drooling dragons. In Botswana's Akavango, we saw one of the last refuges for Africa's 4,000 wild dogs. Next, we hopped onto the Galapagos Islands to find equatorial penguins and giant tortoises. Following a call to Madagascar, we soaked up the sun with the lemurs. Then we headed to Malaysian Borneo for its jungle swingers. In the Canadian Arctic, we let belugas and bowheads blow our minds. 
and fewer than 650 mountain gorillas and remote rainforest made Central Africa our penultimate choice. But our final destination is more exclusive still and has an even rarer mammal. Siberia is our top location for endangered wildlife greats. Don't expect this to be an easy ride. With winter temperatures below minus 20 degrees Celsius, that's minus 4 Fahrenheit, you'll need to wrap up extremely warm, and you must also expect to wait. Our star creature is elusive and shy, the Siberian tiger. This is the biggest cat in the world, and it's so rare, very few people have ever seen a wild one. You'll need to head for Vladivostok in the far east of Russia, next to the Sea of Japan. From here, you must travel 11 hours north to the Sikata Alin Reserve. You'll search long and hard for the Siberian tiger. In the 1940s, only 30 of these beautiful animals were left in the wild. Now their numbers have slowly grown to 200. Traveling on foot has its advantages, and not just for fun. It gives you more a chance to see the small clues that could lead to a big cat. Spot some scratch marks, and you know a tiger must have passed this way. Paw marks are an even better sign. Researchers can tell how recently they were made, and often, which individual tiger made them. Find a freshly stripped boar skull, and you can almost feel that tiger breathing down your neck. Tigers can't resist a good meal, and they will often feed at night. If you can brave the icy temperatures and set up watch, you could find yourself staring right into the eyes of the most awesome big cat of all. If none of those tricks work, you'll really need to up the stakes. Because these cats are so rare, some of them are radio collared. They can be tracked from the air. If you persevere and eventually spot a Siberian tiger in the wild, you'll join an elite club of wildlife tourists. Nobody will ever be able to outdo your traveler's tales of endangered species. Beauty, strength, and extreme exclusivity. This has to be the ultimate animal high. And that's why we rate Siberia as top choice in our rare wildlife greats. Our destinations have taken you to some of the most beautiful places on Earth. Visit one of them and you're in for a great wilderness experience. And you could be helping to save the rare animals you meet on the way.